Savior or Lord. None of us. That's right, Lord. He sent his own son. Why? Because none of us qualified. That's right. 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 How can we qualify when he is be qualified to do that when he is sending somebody else to redeem us? Right. And when he did come and redeem us, <clears throat> why you got people acting like it didn't mean nothing? Like God just wasted his time. Let me tell you something. God doesn't waste his time. You may think he you to live the way he commands you to live but he's not if you don't want to do that guess what next up he go right on to somebody who's going to receive and accept what he says but he's going to give everybody an opportunity to accept them everybody because the bible says everybody going to be in, going to have heard you know the message of salvation before jesus comes back that's why it's important you talk to people about the lord see because you are to be the witness and the testimony but you can't be the kind of witness and a testimony that God has called you to be if you're out there dibbling and dabbling in the world. Right. You can't. Jesus said no man or woman can serve two masters. He says you're going to have to choose. And by not choosing him, you have already chosen. Right. See? Yes. Because you, you, you never say, oh, I believe in Jesus and I'm serving Jesus. If you never say that, then you have taken the other alternative automatically because you shut up. You're not out there talking about I'm repenting of my sin and I'm giving Jesus my life and my heart. No, you ain't doing none of that. And because you're not doing any of that, then you've already said, I don't want none of that. Because what did Jesus say? If, 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 if you are a child of God, if you are one of his sheep, he says, number one, you're going to know me. Right. Number two, he said, you're going to hear me. Number three, he says, you ain't going to be following after no stranger. Mm -hmm. See? Because he says, when a stranger starts talking, you start running. That's what it says in John chapter 10. You start running from that stuff. But now you got too many people on it. Well, you know, I just want to see what they got to say. Mm -hmm. And I've said this before many times. Curiosity killed the cat. That's an old saying. Because we've got that old curious spirit that we think that, well, that we got not from God. We got that from the devil. Because you ain't got to be curious about nothing with God because he's going to tell you everything. Right. And whether you find out what it is or not, it's only on you. It's not that it ain't available. Anything that you need to know, anything that you need to do, anything that you need to say, it can be found in this Bible and it can be found through the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Right. That's it. See, the thing about God confirms his word by the Holy Ghost. Amen. See, because the Holy Spirit will say, yep, that's God. And then he's going to tell you where you can find it. See, man ain't going to do that because he wants to be in control. Right. See? Right. And if you are not wanting God to be in control, you're in the same boat that they're in. Right. God ain't going to respect a person. Right. God is not going to treat people, you know, this person different than that person. Everybody's going to get treated the same. Right. But depending on what church you go to, you're going to get treated different. Right. Come and visit that. Go visit that church one Sunday and see how different they treat you. They're going to treat you like you are some stranger. They're going to be cordial, going to be kind and all of that. They should not be treating you like a stranger. Right. If they are truly of God and they belong to Jesus Christ and he is their Lord and Savior, they ought to be treating you like a family member. Right. Amen. Right. See, that's the way they should be treating you right. and stuff. See, see when, you get, when you get down to the nitty gritty in the word of God, there ain't no doggone, uh, what do they call that stuff? There's no uh, shady areas or, or, or stuff like that. God makes sure that you understand everything or you can understand everything that he has to say. Amen. But the thing that lacks in the lives of many people, because Jesus said, many going to find that broad way. Mm -hmm. See? What happens is there is a lack of love for God. And if you don't have the love for God, forget about having faith in God. You ain't right. going to have that because the right. Holy Spirit is the one that's going to lead you in that area. Right. See, But if God don't belong to you and you don't belong to him, see, God gives himself completely and totally over to anybody who says, I repent of my sin. Please, God, forgive me of my sin. And God knows what you, whether you mean it or not. Right. Right. Because what happens if you meant it, 
Your life changed just like that. Right. See, I don't buy into this crap where people say, oh, well, you know, I got saved. But you don't see them changing. Mm -hmm. You see nothing changing. And what you are saying is that there is no power in the Holy Ghost and there's no power in the Word of God when God says totally opposite. Right. Thy words are spirit. Thy words are life. Right. Thy word is power. Right. And if you don't believe God's words power, how in the world do you think we're sitting in the midst of his creation? Mm. He caused it to come about by a spoken word and by the power and the authority in that word that only comes from God. Amen. Right. It comes to us through Christ by the Holy Spirit. See? But yeah, we don't want that. Most people don't want that. See? You know, the old saying, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm not being sick and tired anymore. I'm not worried about people who do not want to surrender themselves to God because of the fact that they say it, but they ain't do it. Right. See? But what did, what did James say? James said, look, don't be a hearer of the word. He said, be a doer. A doer. A doer. That means you're going to have to get off your lazy butt and start having an ear for the Holy Spirit Amen. so that he can lead you, teach you, and guide you to do whatever God called you to do. Amen. See? Amen. <clears throat> you ain't getting it no other way. <clears throat> See? And the difference in a person that truly walks in the things of God and a person that doesn't, the person that walks in the things of God, all they wanted to hear was what God told them to do. And they say, yes, Lord, yes, Father. Yes, 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 yes. whatever. Yes. They ain't sitting around talking about, well, that may be a little bit too hard to do. Well, that don't fit my doctrine. That don't fit our church and all of this stuff. See, if it don't fit your church and it's the word of God, you might want to get your butt out of there. That's right. See? Because if you're in a place to where Jesus Christ is not Lord and Savior and you're not being led by the Holy Spirit and you're not being guided to live your life completely and totally in honor of Jesus Christ, you are being lied to. Amen. Amen. You're being lied to. Amen. Because if the Bible says live by every word of God, so when somebody tries to give you something else that ain't the word of God, they are lying to you. Right. And you sit up there like a dog gone, uh, not on a log, you know, uh, 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 doing your lift like this, like you don't know nothing. See? The Bible is so common sense, uh, 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 so common sense, I put it that way. That all you got to do is just submit yourself to understand it by asking God to see, to help you to understand it. See, when people say, well, I don't understand that. I don't know what's going on. What did Jesus say? You have not because you ask not. Right. Right. See, yeah. so there ain't going to be no excuses for none of us as to whether we or why we didn't do the word of God. Nobody is going to have an excuse. See, and the thing about it is when I'm telling you the truth, or whatever, you can, you can ignore it if you want to because it's not me telling you what to do. I'm telling you what God said you ought to be doing. Right, right, See? Right. And if I give you anything that is not in this Bible, then you need to stop coming and see it and listen to what I got to say. Right. Right. Because if I'm not telling you what God said, I'm lying to you. Right. Right. Because there ain't but one truth. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus say? Thy word mm -hmm. is truth. Right. The word of God is the only truth that we have. See? And all this other stuff is just a bunch of googly God. A bunch of preachers running around fancying themselves by, by, by trying to uh, uh, impress people and make people think that they're so holier than thou and there's no such thing as a holier than thou believer. Right. Right. If you are holy, it's only because God made you that way. It's only because you sought the Lord, because you sought him and you wanted to serve him. You wanted to honor him. You wanted to obey him. You wanted to give your complete and total surrender and your life to the service of God. And God said, I can accept that Amen. because Amen. that's exactly what I called you to do. Right. See, but why is it so hard for people to do that? Why? Because you got a bunch of lying hypocrites. And you know, I was I was looking up that word, <coughs> and you can turn in your Bibles to Matthew 23. We're going to start over there. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Sam, you want to get right there some water, baby? Thank you. All right, thank you, baby. Um, what did I say? Matthew 23? Yeah. But because people be talking about, well, you know, I tell you, I just, I just don't, I don't agree with that word there. I don't really like that word and stuff. You know, well, he shouldn't talk to, to uh, he shouldn't say that like that. Or, you know, they said that about Jesus every day. They always found fault with him. And I'm going to tell you something. A person that does not want to live holy, does not want to live righteous, does not want to believe God, they will always find fault with the truth. They're going to find fault with the truth, man. And you know, and that truth can be coming, it can be the person that the mouth, that, that his mouth is coming out of. See? Because instead of, you know, blaspheming God, they find it much easier to blaspheme the messenger. That's what they do. See? But, the, but I'm telling you, a person that don't want to believe the word of God, they're going to always find fault with it. I've seen that every dead gum year. Since we've been in this church, I've seen people who have, thank you, sweetie, who have found fault with the word of God when it's preached. And they're always shooting doggone arrows or a 45 pistol at the preacher. Mm -hmm. See? Because they figure, well, if I can shut him up, they ain't got to listen to that no more. Mm -hmm. See? I got a better solution for you. Why don't you just leave? Mm -hmm. That'd be the easiest thing to do. Because you're sitting up there talking about what you're going to do and all this stuff. All you're doing is making God mad. Right. Because God said he's jealous over his people. Right. And trust me, if God has a vessel or a servant who is completely doing what God has called them to do, you ain't got to worry about him being in trouble. The person that's shooting at him is the one going to be in right. trouble. Right. See? Right. See, we underestimate the love that God has for his people. The obedient ones. Right. Because the obedient ones, there ain't nothing God won't do for them. That's right. Absolutely nothing. That's right. But if you're out there him hauling around and being lukewarm and, and all of this stuff, God ain't got time for you. Right. God wants your whole heart. Right. Right. And if you belong to God, you're going to do all of God's will. Right. Simple right. as that. Right. That's just the way that's going to work and stuff. So, so the thing, I, I was looking up that word. Um, what did I say that word was? Hold, I mean, a uh, hypocrite. Yeah. And and the thing was, I got back there and I had some of that stuff going on back there. I, I was putting this paper on that paper and all that paper on this paper and all of that stuff. But you know, the thing about a hypocrite, a hypocrite is somebody who claims to be what they are not. Mm -hmm. Simple, that's a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. See? And a person, they can say that they saved all day long, but if they're living a double life, they are a liar, a deceiver, and a hypocrite. Right. A, a hypocrisy entails a whole different uh, list of things. If you're a hypocrite, you're a liar. If you're a hypocrite, you de you're deceiving your own self. Right. Right. If you're a hypocrite, you are lukewarm, which is not acceptable to God. See? Right. If you're a hypocrite... You're not stable in nothing. Right. Why? Because you're trying to live a double life. Right. Right. You're trying to tell people on this side of town that, oh, I'm loving God. Ooh, child, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But on this side over here, you want to hang out with these clowns over here that all they want to do is they want to doggone party. They want to go do what they want to do. They want to go out and hang with the homosexuals. They want to go out and hang with the doggone fornicators and all of this. They want to still do that. And then they want to say, I'm still saved. Mm -hmm. But see, the problem with that, you're not your judge. Right. And neither am I. Right. Right. God is the judge. And God says you are going to be judged by everything you did on this earth, good and bad. Right. Every lie you told, you're going to be held accountable for that. Every time you deceive somebody by lying to them, thinking that you knew the word. I know the word and all that. No, you know the word based on the lies that you've been feeding yourself and the lies that you've been sitting up underneath somebody and allowing them to feed you those lying and deceiving things. Right. See? Right. And you go out there and you share with somebody like their truth. See? 
See, two fools will believe the same thing. Mm -hmm. Two fools don't know no better. Because the Bible says a fool says in his heart, there is no God. And you, and he says he says it in his heart. He said, I ain't going to say it out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. He says it in his heart. But the thing about your heart is, your heart reveals to everybody who you really are. Right. You know, because of what's in your heart, you're going to live it, and eventually you're going to say it. Right. See? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's what the Word of God says. Amen. See? So ain't no hiding. You know, and you know, that's one of the dumbest things that anybody can think is they can hide from God. I mean, really, how stupid is that? Well, I think, you know, I'm such... I'm such a spiritual person, I can hide my stuff from God. Now that's a fool. I mean, that's a real big, fat, juicy fool. You know, because of the fact that they think that they can manipulate God to believe the way they believe. What a fool, man. How stupid is that? But <clears throat> the thing about it is, uh, as I was reading to you about the, uh, about the hypocrite, They claim to be somebody that they're not. They have a form of godliness, but without power. You can call yourself godly all you want, but those who are truly walking in the things of God, they have the power and the authority to do all that God has called them to do, to live a saved life, to be a powerful witness, to be a, go a godly example. You can't do that without the Holy Ghost uh, being behind you doing that stuff. Right. You can't do it. Not only that, you don't even want to do it though. Because when there's a lack of relationship with God, you ain't going to be wanting to do all of that stuff. Why? Because you ain't even thinking about that. You've got your mind stayed on something else other than Jesus. Mm. See? Because what you do, how you live, as I said, is going to dictate what you believe and who you believe. And you can say whatever you want. There ain't but two people in this life or two spirits that you're going to be led by, one or the other. If you're not being led by the Spirit of God, you are definitely being led by the Spirit of the devil. Because right. right. Jesus said so. Mm -hmm. But you tell people that, they go, who do you think he is? And I would say, telling you the truth. I'm a truth teller. And I say that with the joy of the Lord behind me. I don't want to lie to people. Right. I don't want to deceive people. I don't want to, and I will not deceive people, and I will not manipulate people right. Right. to think the way that I want you to think. No, that ain't happening. See? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you straight from the book what it says, and however the Holy Ghost tells me to tell you, that's how it's coming out. Right. You know, I'm not owned by any man. I'm owned by God. Amen. And I chose to let him be my master. Amen. I chose to allow him to do that. And whatever he says, that's what I'm doing. Amen. You know, it don't matter to me what anybody like, whether anybody likes it or not. See? And I've said this for years and stuff. Run some people off, but that's okay. They, they weren't supposed to be here anyway. That's right. I mean, really. That's right. They're not supposed to be here. Because, you know, my wife and I, we have never prayed for a big church. We have never prayed for a whole bunch of people. The only prayer we pray is, God, send us people who want to be here. Send us people that love you. Send us people that are willing to walk with you and to talk with you and to be led by the Spirit of God and who want to surrender their whole life to your will, to your purpose, to your service. Those are the kind of people that we pray for. That's right. See? Because the rest of them, those who do come through here that don't want that, they ain't going to be around very much, very long. Mm -mm. They're not. Mm -mm. See? And the thing is, you cannot cater, I cannot and I will not, cater your message to the feelings of people in the service, in the right. church or whatever. Right. You know, no, God didn't tell me to do that. God didn't tell me to scratch your back, rub your back, you know, and, 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 and not preach things to you that were not, that were smooth that were deceptive. And you got people, that's exactly what they want. They want a deceiving word 
And they want you to tell them lies. They want you to preach to them smooth things. And they don't want you to tell them the whole truth. You cannot be preaching, call yourself saying this the word of God when you're only preaching part of it. Right. You're not. That's not that's that's almost like being lukewarm. Because yeah. all you're doing is preaching part of it, and you're not preaching that part that's gonna set your soul on fire. Right. Right. See? Right. You don't want that. And then, but if you're a child of God, that's exactly what you want. Right. You don't want anything in your heart hiding back in there right. that will keep you separated from God. That's right. You don't want none of that. See? True. What did David say? Search me, know me, try. try me, if there be any iniquity in me. See, David True. said, look, God, I want to be holy before you. I want my heart clean and pure and right before you. God, you're the only somebody can search my heart and know my heart and find out if there's any iniquity in me and expose it to me and at the same time forgive me, change me, and mold me into the holiness and into your righteousness. Amen. You're the only somebody Amen. can do that. Amen. Can no man do that? Right. See? That's Can true. no man do that? God is the only somebody that can Amen. do that. Hallelujah. And I'm so thankful. That none of us, if we really want, we don't have to depend on man. Right. right. We don't have to depend on ourselves, see? Right. <clears throat> and God willingly said, what? Cast all your care upon me because right. I care for you. Right. Yes. I'm the Lord your God. He said, I will supply all your need according to my riches and glory. Right. See? Right. Now, he may use people to, 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 to meet those needs. But those are going to be the people who have already told God, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. Amen. See? Right. Right. Well, see, we have an obligation. We do. My wife and I, as, pa as me as a pastor of this church and her being my helpmate, we have an obligation to hear the Holy Spirit no matter what he tells us to do in the lives of other people. And these people are people that we don't have to know. Right. right. See, because the scriptures say, you know, you help the poor. You help the needy. You do those kinds of things and stuff. Now, you can give them, those kind of people he's talking about, you give them material things. You know, then you give them a, a word and you share the word with them and stuff. But now, these other people who got spiritual needs, you better be telling them what that Bible says, Amen. man. See? You better be telling them what it says, see? Because I'm going to tell you something. The preachers are going to be held doubly Accountable, right. accountable for whether they told the truth or not, right. or whether they did what God told them to do right. or not. That's going to be a double penalty for that, man. Right. Can you imagine what Jesus said? There will be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth in hell, and the preacher's going to get double that mm. because he failed to obey what God told him to do? Mm. I ain't going to hell for nobody. Right. And I'm not having anybody's blood dripping from my hands right. when I see Jesus face to face. Because if I do not preach truth, if I do not tell you what thus saith the Lord, the Bible says the blood of those people that I deceived, that I led astray, that I didn't tell the truth, that blood is on my hands. Right. See? So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not worried about that. See, that ain't going to be happening. Because I'm going to obey God, no matter what he says. And I'm going to tell you something. You, I, well, first of all, I can't obey God. And you can't obey God, obey God if you are not firm in your faith. If you are not a straightforward person, a person that's going to dig their heels into the word of God, into the faith of God, into the things of God, and that foundation be in Jesus, you better get as deep in Jesus as you can get. See? Yeah. Because you can't be walking around here scared to tell the truth. Mm. Right. Hmm? Y'all ain't saying nothing to them, you know. Mm -hmm. They ain't cussing me out. They ain't, uh, they ain't well, you know, you know how they are. You know, them some crazy people and stuff. See? What did God tell you to do? God said you tell the truth, but he also said what? Fear not. Right. What are you afraid of? If God is your father, why are you afraid? If he is your father, you know, the Bible says. You know that if God be for me, who can be against me? See? You got all these people running around here are scared, scared because of what they were told to fear. Even though it wasn't real. And people can say what they want, it wasn't real. 
Because now you're finding out that people have been lied to from day one by the people who are supposed to be telling them the truth. Mm -hmm. The CDC and all them clowns. Mm -hmm. See? And yet they fear that crap and they believe that crap. But when Jesus said, fear not, you go, you crazy. That doggone virus is out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am very serious. Right. That virus is out there. So you must have forgot about all those people that God, well, he protected when he, when he, when he put the, all those uh, uh, plagues on Egypt. Did, this, did his people get the plagues? No. He protected them. No. And he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. And you ain't got enough doggone faith to believe that God will keep you no matter what. Right. Right. I'm not running around here being stupid, scared of a doggone something that, 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 has, that can't even, even do nothing to the power of God other than bow to it. Right. Amen. See? That's it. Thank you. Amen. See? But you got, oh, Lord, oh, please, I, I, oh, you ain't got your mask on. You need to wear your mask. <laughs> See, that's how stupid people are. Yeah. And the thing about it is they don't have no proof that the mask worked. Right. Not one doggone piece of evidence that it works. But what it says is people who call themselves saved they are more emboldened in a sense to believe man instead of believing God. Because that's what Jesus said. That's what he said. He said that if, 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 if I were to come in my name, he said if one were to come in his name, he said, hey, you're going to believe him. He said, but if I come in my name, what did he say? He said, you ain't going to believe me. He said, you will not believe me. See? See, I, you know, I'm done with the well. Well, you might, might not, not want to talk about that, you know, because that's pretty sensitive. I'm going to tell you something. Going to hell is pretty sensitive, too. Because right. mm -hmm. he's going to burn your hide every day of your eternal life. Mm -hmm. See? Right. Eternal. You ain't going to be in hell for a week yeah. just to try it out yeah. and see whether you want to stay there or not. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. That ain't happening. You're not going to be just staying there, you know, because you think that, well, you know, my preacher told me that, well, you know, hell ain't real. So I, I just think I want to go down there and see what it's like. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. That's what that is. The scripture I just said, we are going to Matthew 23. But I, I'm going to just read this, read this scripture to you out of John. You can write it down and, and read it later. In John chapter 5, verse 41 through 44. And this is Jesus speaking. Jesus said, I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. Mm. I am come in my Father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. And these are people who are supposed to be knowing and serving God he's talking to. Mm -hmm. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God? How can you believe because you go hang around people that tell you what you want to hear. You go around hanging around people who, who believe like you believe. See, our belief is not faith, man. Right. Our belief is not from God. Mm -hmm. See, because you can believe in the devil and call it God all you want to, and that's what a lot of people do. Sure. They're doing the devil's bidding, but they'll say, oh, I'm a child of God. But see, they don't understand that the judgment of, on what you just said, the judger is Jesus. Right. See? Right. And he knows what's of God and what's not of God. Amen. So you can't trick him. Right. Mm -mm. You think you can, but you can't. You can't trick him. And I'm going to tell you something. Jesus hated hypocrites like all get out. Yes, he, did. he hated them. 
He did not speak well about the Pharisees. And understand something about the Pharisees. They were supposed to be the religious leaders like the people we got in churches now. The pastors, the evangelists, the bishops, and all of those people. Those were the people he was talking to. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know the scripture, you know that those guys weren't no more about the God's business than a man in the moon. Mm -hmm. It was all about themselves. Right. It was all about, you know, how they appeared before men. It was all about people respecting them and honoring them and literally obeying them more so than God. Right. They did what they did so that people would put all their faith in them and they wanted to do that so that they could strike fear in them. Because people were afraid, afraid rather, of the religious leaders in that day that if they said something that did not agree with their doctrine, they would, they would uh, 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 threaten them that you can't come into this, this synagogue no more. Mm -hmm. You don't believe me? Read in John chapter 9 where the blind man got healed by Jesus. And when they went to his parents and asked his parents, ain't that your boy? Or whatever, and they say, yep, yeah, they's our boy. Was he born blind? Yeah, he was born blind or whatever. Well, who was it that healed him? You know, and they knew that who had healed him. When Jesus did something, the Bible almost says immediately everywhere, it spread all over the place. Right. See, right. so everybody knew. But those people had had so much fear built up to them, just like these folks with this COVID crap and these masks and stuff, that the Lord had much, oh, no, no. They, they, they scared the crap out of them. You know, I know y'all don't like that word crap, but I'm sorry. <laughs> but they scared the crap out of them and stuff. And so what did they do in the world? The same thing. Why? They are tools of the devil. The Pharisees were. Yeah. Right. The religious were. The yeah. Sadducees. They were all of the devil. When you look at their character, when you look at the things that they did and why they did them, they didn't line up with God. Right. They lined up with the devil. Right. Fear is not of God. That kind of fear right. is not of God. Right. God is not going to try to scare you into a position to where you are afraid of him. And that's the only reason you serve him because you are fearful, not according to the fear that God puts in man's heart. The fear that God puts in our heart is a fear that causes us to draw closer to God, mm -hmm. not to run away from him. Right. See? Not to cause you to be, ooh, I'm sitting up here in my closet with all my lights off because I'm so scared. Because I see, I heard the other day that the COVID is in my community and they're going around knocking on doors, seeing who they can infect. Mm -hmm. That's about how stupid that is. Mm -hmm. I mean, really. That's about how stupid it is. See? If it was, if it was really just about uh, 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 the flu, ain't nobody freaked out about the flu. But you know why? Because wasn't nobody out there constantly lying about it. Right. With the purpose in mind to scare the crap out of people. Right. To control people is the real reason for all of that. Right. See? And I swear, I, mean, you go, I go to these grocery stores, and look, let me just say this about masks. I don't care. I'm not wearing a mask. You want to wear one, knock yourself out. I'm not going to be coming up to you talking about, you need to take that mask off. You need to take that mask off. I don't care. You can suffocate in that mask all you want to. See? I'm telling you, I swear, I, when, every time I put a mask on, I had to take it off. Because even when I'm working outside, I can't breathe. And I know darn well, if that happens to me, that happens to everybody else, well, we're going to just suffer up here and just kill ourselves with our own carbon dioxide. We just die. <laughs> See? We, we just, you know, yeah, we're going to be real stupid little, we're going to be like a herd of cattle. That whatever they tell us to do, we're going to all just get in line. I ain't like that. Right. I'm not scared of nothing. Right. Because God is my father. Right. Why right. should I be afraid of anything or anybody? And the thing about it is, God says, you shall know the truth. Yeah, I'm going to know this truth, but I'm going to know that truth out there too. Because whether I know that truth or not, or identify as to what it exactly is, it affects my relationship and my walk with God. Right. If I'm believing a lie, it affects my relationship with God because God is a God of truth. Right. See, So I ain't going to be stupid out there. I am not going along with people just because everybody else wants to be a fool. I'm not being one. Because all I got to have is common sense. Yeah. Figure stuff out. 
And the same, and the sensitive thing though, see, with me, if I'm gonna, if God expects me to live a certain way, I'm gonna find out how I'm supposed to be living. And I'm not calling no preacher, say, hey, pastor, you know, I believe God told me that he want me to live a certain, what do I need to do? If that pastor got any kind of sense whatsoever, he say, go buy your Bible. Mm -hmm. well, See, because I'm not the Holy Spirit. Go get your Bible, read that Bible, ask God to reveal what it is that you're reading and stuff, because he will. Because, see, the thing about it, God deals with everybody differently. Right. In your life, you need to find out what he's got going on in your life that you need to be doing that you ain't doing. Right. Right. See? But first of all, if you, ain't, if you ain't studying your Bible right there, don't even go waste God's time. Because you cannot communicate with God if you don't know what the truth is. Right. It's kind of hard to communicate with somebody, you know, who is all truth, all holiness. And here you come with a doggone paper, greasy paper bag with a doggone Santa sandwich in it. <laughs> trying to talk to God about holiness and righteousness and all that. And you don't even believe in it. Mm. It's kind of crazy, really. Kind of stupid as well. But, uh, <clears throat> but the thing is, is that, is that when a person is a hypocrite, and they and they like the hypocrisy, you know why? Because every time somebody tries to confront them with the truth, they defend their hypocrisy mm -hmm. instead of saying, "Well, let me see if God really said that." See, that's what I tell y'all here. Whenever you hear me preach something, get your Bible mm -hmm. and see. And honestly, you should be taking notes. I tell you the truth, like Samuel. See, yeah, I mean because there's sometimes you hear stuff and it really don't. Like register, you need to write that down and you need to go to the Bible to find out, yeah. you know, exactly what that said. See, you ain't going to go to that Bible. You know, you go to most people's house now that got a Bible in there, you know, you better not hit the top of it too hard. You're going to suffocate all that dust coming up <laughs> off of that sucker. Had that Bible for 50 years and never opened it up. But when people come to your house, you go, they go, ooh, that's a pretty Bible. A little bit dusty, but it's pretty, you know, see. The Bible is not for show. Right. right. It's not for show. And people people like to talk about how pretty their Bible is. You know, man, ain't you got, ooh, I, I, I really like this Bible. Really? Okay, so what did you study in there? Share some of that with me? Well, no, I ain't studied none yet, but, you know, I, I'm going to get in there. Now. It, it's, see, people, this is what people expect God to do. Wait on them. Mm -hmm. Wait on them. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because... This is what God said. What? Today is the day of yeah, salvation. Okay. Today. A lot of people put it off, and it's too late when they think about, well, I should have done it. When you're in hell and talking like that, you're too late then. It's too late. Okay, so in Matthew 23, um, uh, <clears throat> Okay, to be a hypocrite is to give others, as I said, the impression that you are holier than you actually are. It is also the same as being false or telling a lie. Because you're saying you're somebody and you know you're not. Right. And, and Jesus pronounced a curse on hypocrites seven times in Matthew 23. We're going to read that here in a second. It is impossible to tell a lie without even opening your mouth. Ananias lied to the Holy Spirit without saying a word. Remember in Acts chapter 5? You know, when they went to Peter and they uh, lied to Peter about what they had given after they had sold some stuff that they'd owned. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said, hey, you lied to the Holy Ghost. Peter said that, you lied to the Holy Ghost. What happened? Boom, dropped dead. And Ananias ain't opened his mouth. Dead. Because he knew ain't no sense in repent because he know that's what he did. You know, it's, you know, and see, this is what happens to a lot of people. When you call them on stuff that they are doing and they know you're telling the truth, they can't say anything. Right. Right. They can't say nothing. They just kind of go, uh, you know, can't say nothing. Cause, and, you know, and what they're really saying in their heart is, oh, I just got busted. Mm -hmm. See? And the thing about it is, man, if you're not living the life that you ought to be living in the Lord, you ought to want to get busted. Right. Right. Because you ought to want to get yourself right. Right. 
I don't want to get yourself right. Okay, so in, in Matthew chapter 23, in, um, in verse 13, we'll start there. But woe unto you, and I want you to listen to how Jesus is talking to these people because there's too many people wanting the preacher to be soft, wanting the preacher to be smooth, wanting the preacher to tell them lies, wanting the preacher to say, oh, don't worry about it. It's okay for y'all living together. You can, it's all right. You know, God isn't that kind of God. God ain't going to send nobody to hell. See, they're preaching stuff that ain't even in the Bible. Yeah. And you got people stupid enough to believe them. Mm -hmm. See? And the reason people don't fear hell because ain't nobody talking about it. Right. Mm -hmm. See? Not warning anybody about it. Jesus said in hell there's going to be weeping, wailing, gnashing, the grinding of teeth. Where the worm die, uh, dies not and the fire is not quenched. That's what the Bible says. See? So as much as people want to make Jesus uh, hang on the doggone wall looking all sissified, <laughs> that ain't happening. Jesus ain't no sissy. Right. You know, and God made sure he let you know that right off the bat because he was a carpenter. Carpenters work with their hands, build stuff, and it's manual labor. It ain't no pussyfoot and stuff. So all these lies that people are putting up here on their walls about how Jesus is, you know, and, and I shared it with y'all before. He, Jesus be, they got pictures of Jesus sitting up there you know, on the picture with a robe draped across him like this. <laughs> that just shows you they don't know nothing about him. Right. At all. <laughs> nothing. See, the problem is people try to make Jesus compatible to the world. It's what they do. And that ain't going to ever happen. Okay, so verse 13, Jesus said, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and that's in verse 12, and, shall, and, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Verse 13, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. In other words, they live a life that's committed to the devil, and they teach everybody else to live the same way that they do. Jesus warned people all the time about the Pharisees. He says when they're standing in Moses' seat, when they're, when they're really just reading the word of God, he said, you can believe them when they're doing that. He said, but don't do like they do. Don't live like them. See, don't live like them. It says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore, you shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. Now these are these are the preachers he's talking to. Woe unto you, woe unto you, you blind guides. Okay, now he done went from a hypocrite to blind guides. And you notice in scripture he says. That if the blind lead the blind, they all going to fall in a pile up in a ditch. It's what he said. Because a blind man don't know where he's going. But Jesus said this about those who are his. He says, I am the light and those who are of me. He said, you will not walk in darkness. If, you, if you're walking in darkness, and this is because uh, Jesus didn't doubt going to prepare you to be able to see everything in your life. Oh, he is the light. See? And so, and so he says in verse 17, you fools and blind. Went from blind, from hypocrite to blind guides to fools and blind. For whether is greater the gold of the temple that sanctified the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing, but whosoever swears by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. You fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift of the altar that sanctified the gift. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, swear by it and by all things thereon. And whosoever shall, and whoso shall swear by the temple, swear by it and by him that dwelleth therein. Go to verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. 
These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Because if they started preaching that kind of stuff like that, man, you know, they could all be up on the doggone corner being stoned to death. <laughs> See? You don't preach the truth now. Because if you preach the truth, you're going to be get some big trouble. Big trouble. Because there are more people who are willing to believe a lie than believe the truth. And I said that a couple of weeks ago. It's amazing to me how nowadays people have no problem believing a lie and telling a lie. Lies have flipped what truth was all about. People used to want to know what the truth was. They don't want to know what the truth is. And I don't care if it's the truth in the Bible or it's the truth out here in the doggone society. If you, like I, uh, the example I used, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Okay, you saw somebody out here stealing something that didn't belong to them. And you called the police and you told them, you said, hey, yeah, I seen it. That's a, that's a car and that's a tag number. I wrote that down and all that. Do you know that would be not only the person that you squealed on, are going to be mad at you. They're going to be her friends or their friends mad at you because you told the truth. Right. See? You told the truth and now everybody's mad at you. See? And they're going to do the same thing with that kind of truth or that kind of lie that they do with the word of God. Mm -hmm. They're going to twist it and make it God's fault or the person that's preaching it going to make it his fault. In verse... Um, 24, it says, you blind guys which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. <laughs> see, Jesus has a sense of humor. Can you see him trying to fit a doggone camel down these cow lion's throat? I try to fit that hump in there first. Verse 25, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Self-indulgence, that's what that means. They love themselves. And you know, and people who think that they kind of shun the truth and lie about the truth, they, you know, they think that they really loving themselves. You hate yourself. Because the way that you're living like the way you believe in that, you hate yourself because if you die like that, you're gonna go to hell. Right. Why wouldn't you just want to do right and live by the truth, man? And be able to you know, to live the life that God wants you to live. God prepared a life for all of us to live that would be peaceful, that would be loving, that would be kind, and in the end, we get to spend eternity with the Father. Amen. See? But yet, don't, don't too many people want that. Verse 26, Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Because you don't get saved from the outside in. You get saved from the inside out. See? Right. Because if the Holy Spirit is living inside of you, then the Holy Spirit will clean up the outside. See? Right. You know, if, you're, if you choose to be obedient to God. And, and the thing about most people and mo most uh, professing Christians and most unbelievers, you know, today they believe it's up to them to decide how they're going to live their life. And it's up to God to bless them in whatever they decide. Mm. And that's what people want. They want God to accept their sin and accept their unholy lifestyle, you know, and say, okay, that's all right. That's not going to happen. God commands you to do certain things and to live a certain way. That ain't changing. Right. Right. And if you ever forget about it, go to the Bible. It's still in there. God don't blot out nothing. The only thing God blots out are people who choose to add to his word or to take away from his word, then he will blot your name out the Lamb's book of life. Right. Now, he'll do that. See? But the thing is, is that you better be serious about your confession when you say it. Because I'm not sure that most people didn't even make a confession. I'm talking about according to what God said. They didn't make that confession. So, so the thing is, is that it says for many professing believers today, they attend church occasionally for a motivational pep talk, open up the Bible even less, and serve at the local kitchen once a year if they're feeling generous. 
They are more interested in community service than worshiping and serving God in the spirit and in truth. In Mark 30, uh, 8, 34, and 35, and it's talking about Jesus, it says, When he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself or herself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. See, you got to give up the life that you were living before you say you came to know Jesus. Right. If you don't, he can't do anything for you. Right. And he's not the one that's the hindrance, you are. Right. Your disobedience is what's hindering him. Three things that said in that scripture. It says, deny self and interest, deny self and self-interest, and to seek God first. If you seek God first, self ain't gonna be nowhere in that. Because your concern ain't going to be about self. It's going to be about doing the will of God. Number two is to conform to the example of Christ. What does it say in, in, uh, in Romans, I think, in chapter, it's either chapter 8 or chapter 12. It says, be, not, be ye not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we're to walk in the mind of Christ. If we don't have the mind of Christ, then we need to do some fellowship with God, you know, and get the right mind and stuff. Because if you got the right mind, then you're going to, you will listen to what the Holy Spirit says, and then you will, you'll follow him. And Jesus said this in Matthew 22, 36, uh, I think 36 to 41. He says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Those two. Loving the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Now, if you do that, it's literally impossible for you to really willfully sin against God. Right. Impossible. Right. Impossible right. when you're living like that. Right. See? And, and a person that's truly committed, they believe they can do that. Yeah. And that's what they live and strive to do on a daily basis is to love the Lord their God with all of their heart. And as I've said so many times, if God has your whole heart, there ain't nothing left to give to anybody else. If, you, if God has your whole heart, then there is no part of your heart that you can even think about giving to anybody else if you don't want to. Right. Because when your heart, when your life is in the hand of God, tell me somebody better who can have, have your life uh, in their hands right. other than him. And the problem is people don't really know God because they don't take the time to get to know him. If you knew God, I can promise you there are a lot of things that you wouldn't be doing. There are a lot of things that you wouldn't be saying. There are a lot of places that you wouldn't be going if you really knew God and you know God after you have fallen in love with God. Amen. See? And that's the problem and stuff. Thank you, Jesus. When you love God, see? And I will tell you, it seems like it's harder for men to fall in love with God than women. What's up with that? Shouldn't be hard. You tell another brother that you love him out in public and people look at you like, you know? You know why? Because that love has been, that, that, that term, that word has been so vilified by the devil and those who serve him that we think if another man tells, if I tell Bruno I love him, which I do every time I see him, you know, they look at it as being perverted. And stuff. See? I don't care what they think. I'm still going to say it. Right. Every time. And I tell all y'all that. And it ain't because, well, you know, I just want to. No, I mean it because that's what I feel. Right. And stuff. But people don't even believe you most of the time. Some people when you say it. Because they just don't believe that somebody can actually love somebody 
and really, you know, live that way in that relationship or that fellowship with those people or with that person. See? Because people let their minds get so screwed up by the world and what happens, they listen more to the world than they do to God. That's right. And, God, and Jesus said himself, you know, if you are serving the world by taking on what they say and what they think and what they do, that's going to shape your belief system. Right. Right. And if you believe something, that's how you're going to live. See? And that's why, you know, there are many who, who, who say they believe, but they don't believe. And this is what Jesus said. You will know them by their fruit. See? Right. And you can't just cast that aside because somebody said, you can't judge me. The Bible says you can judge anybody right. according to righteous judgment. Right. Right. See? And anyway, as I said, how can you not judge the way a person is living in order to know whether you need to witness to them or not? Mm -hmm. Or whether you know whether you need to uh, 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 share the gospel with them or not, or build them up, or lift them up, or whatever. You can't know any of that without knowing, about looking at what that person's doing. Because a saved person acts different than an unsaved person. Excuse me, not acts, lives. Right. A, a person that's born again lives different than an unsaved person lives. Right. And you know if, a, if you're saved and you're living the way God commands you to live, and you look at that person and you know that they're not living according to what the Bible says or whatever, then you know that they ain't like you. Right. <coughs> The person complains about the truth all the time, they ain't like you. Right. A person that tries to make excuses about why they believe this and that, uh, and it ain't the truth, they not like you. Right. I had a guy that I, that I used to work with years ago, and he told me one day at work, he goes, yeah, because I mean, you know, I, I didn't hide the fact that what I believe never have. And so he was talking to me about his wife. He said, yeah, you know, my wife was a pastor. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, uh, a pastor of what? He said, she a pastor in a church. I said, okay, I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, I said, John, I said, I love you, man. I said, but uh, your Bible must be different than mine. I said, because I can't find it in mine. Mm -hmm. I said, show me in scripture where the Bible says she, she shall, you know, be the wife of one husband. Well, she shall have her children in order and all of that. See, I said, now, nah. you know, I said, look, man. I said, now, nah, if you can show me in the Bible where the Bible says that, says this. He said, said that a woman is a pastor and a woman should usurp her authority over a man. I said, show it to me. I said, if you show me that, I said, man, I will repent. I will ask your forgiveness or whatever. I said, I swear, I'll do it. I said, but I know I ain't going to have to do that because it ain't in God's word. See? Right. From that day forward, right. our relationship changed. Mm -hmm. All because I told him the truth. Mm -hmm. See, And the thing about it is, if you know something is the truth, and somebody is telling you something and trying to say that it's okay by God, and you don't say nothing, then you're going to be held accountable for that. Right, right, right. You better tell them the truth. Right, right. Look, the truth is not easy for some people. Right. It's not easy for them. It's not easy for somebody that's not wanting to live that way, that don't believe the whole truth. It's hard for somebody that's believed a false doctrine. It's hard for somebody that's lukewarm. It's hard for somebody that's, that's a backsliding. It's hard for somebody, you know, that really, you know, want to hold to their tradition, to their doctrine. What did Jesus say? He says, you want to teach, you teach for doctrine the commandments of men. He said, you want to hold on to your tradition, and because of that, he says, the word of God ain't going to work for you. Right. It ain't going to work for you. Why? It's not the truth. Right. See? And, and, and I'm telling you, there are going to be so many people because of the fact they were more concerned about what other people thought that they lived their lives that way according to the doctrines and the traditions of men and they abandoned the truth. See? You don't get to heaven by abandoning the truth right. and serving another God. Your God is that religion. Your God is that tradition. 
Your God is the people in that place, in that church, the pastor, or whomever they may be. That's who your God is. Right. See? And you can't be serving another God. But the Bible says that whomever you serve, that's whom you become the servant of. Right. See? And if you're serving, you know, serving people like that, that are that are false, that are teaching false doctrine, that are not telling you the truth about everything, then Jesus says that that's your God. You're serving the devil because that's who they belong to. See? That's who they belong to. So, so we are to follow Jesus in all righteousness. Turn to Matthew chapter 10. And hypocrites don't, don't like this. They're going to they're gonna have a problem with this. Because what we're going we're gonna to read a few scripture that tells you what it looks like to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. So in Matthew 10, 37, this is what Jesus said. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Listen to what Jesus said. If you love it, either, you know, your family members more than you love him, Jesus said, you're not worthy of me. Right. To be worthy of Jesus means that he has to be and must be our first love. Right. Right. Must be. Right. It isn't optional. See? And the thing about it is, as I've said very early on in the message, if you draw close to God, he will draw close to you. Because he wants to. But your will is in play depending on whether you want the relationship or not. The relationship we have with God, it don't depend on him. Right. It yeah. depends on us. That's right. It depends on us whether you want him or not. Right. See? And he put everything in place and promised everything, you know, that you need and even supplied everything that pertains to life and godliness so that when you unite yourself and become one with him, then all of those things happen. Because they've already been put into motion because they're there. Right. If you get saved, born again, and if you continue to walk in the things of God, and if you endure until the end, it is already put in place because of your faithfulness to God and your continuing in the word of God and living your life on your, to your dying day serving and doing the God's will. It's already in place. You inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus said, enter into thy rest, thou good and faithful servant. See, that's already in place. You know the end of your life when you die, you know, if you know what the Bible says. Right. You know what's going to happen. Yeah. Right. God already told you. See, that's the thing about God. God don't spring surprises. Right. He tells you exactly what's going to happen. If you obey him, he says, look, I'm going to be blessing you. Right. I'm going to be your real God. I'm going to be your warrior. I'm going to be your fighter. I'm going to be your peace. I'm going to be your joy. See, right. I'm going to be everything that you need. See, that's why when you get saved, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, it says, If a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are new, and all things are of God. Right. So there is nothing of you that should have survived when you repented of your sin. Right. That old person is supposed to be dead. Right. See? Dead. And most people's lives are not going to change who have called themselves believers until they realize that dude, or that woman is dead. See? Right. And once you let that dead person remain in that grave, now you can walk and be resurrected into newness of life. That's right. See, that's what happens. But until you give that up, you, ain't gonna, you cannot live right for God. No matter what anybody says. So Jesus said, you can't love nobody more than me. He says, if you do, you're not worthy of me. See? In 1 Peter 2.21, it says, For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, 
leaving you an example so that you might follow in his footsteps. Nobody else's but his. Right. See? And if you're following in the footsteps of Jesus, you're going to live a holy life. Amen. You're going to live a life that is very pleasing to God. See? Without question. He said, and, and Peter said, uh, and, and, and uh, yeah, and Peter said, he said, you will call for that reason. To live that kind of life before God. 1 John 2, 3, and 4. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whosoever, whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yep. Thou shalt believe every word that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God. On judgment day, you're going to be held accountable for every word that you heard from this Bible. Mm -hmm. Every word. And the thing about it is, John didn't mince any words here. He says, by this we know whether somebody is of God or not. If we keep his commandments, right. not that one commandment that you want to hold on to, that one. See, you've got to believe it all. See, most have been spoiled, deceptively lied to by saying you don't have to believe the whole word of God. You believe our doctrine. You know, you do what, you know, what we say, you know, if you just go down and shake the preacher's hand, if you go down and sit in front and we sprinkle you all, if you just get immersed in water, that's good enough. No, it's not. Right. You don't have no Bible nowhere that says anyone I just said saved you. Because right. it doesn't. It doesn't save you. And at the end of uh, uh, the message, I'm going to read a few things, just share a few things with you that what salvation is not. Because people got it in their mind, just stuck up in their brain somewhere, you know, that salvation ain't the way God says it is. Two things that you need to understand. The Bible says that I'm the same today, yesterday, forever. I'm the Lord thy God, thy word. I'm the Lord thy God, and I change not. See, so there ain't nothing changed. There's nothing new under the sun. The Bible says that as well. See, so the thing is, you're going to either have to live this life the way God commands you uh, to live it or not. See, and then be willing to suffer the consequences. Because uh, let me just say this, since it's on my mind. Everybody ain't going to heaven. Right. Everybody's not going to heaven. I mean, every funeral that I've been to, Everybody went to heaven. I mean some drunkards, some adulterers, some fornicators. I had a cousin that was a fornicator, died in the bed of fornication. And the preacher still put him in heaven. And I'm sitting up there going, why he looking at us? No. Fornicators are not going to go to heaven. Right. Right. You die as a fornicator, you are going to hell. Right. Right. If you die as an adulterer, you are going to hell. Right. If you're a person that dies lusting at other people in your mind, in your head, Jesus said that if you think it and if you commit the act in your head, he said you might as well go out there and just, and just commit the fornication, fornication act. See? So it's about what you think and what you dwell on as well. See? The thing about it is, you know, if you're not married, you ain't got no business acting like it. Right. Right. Sleeping together, living together, rubbing up on each other together. You ain't got no business doing that. Right. Right. None whatsoever. That's not God. Right. See? Well, I feel. I feel. That's what's going to get a lot of people in trouble. Their feelings. Mm -hmm. And not their faith. Right. Right. See? When you're walking with God, man, you are hearing what the Holy Spirit said about everything. And I'm going to tell you something. You're going to be more cautious about everything than you ever thought of. Everything and everybody. See? Because, see, I learned the hard way. 
You trust, I trust the people because they said they knew, they said they knew Jesus. I trust the people because they said that they were saved. I trust the people because that they said they said that they were Christian. Of course, I don't believe in that word anyway, because I never heard Jesus say that word. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, "Be born again." Ain't that what He told Nicodemus yeah. in John chapter three? Right. Be born again. Mm -hmm. See, the thing about it is nowadays Christian that can mean anything. Yeah. You got homosexuals that are Christian by that term, and not the way they use that. You know, because if that were the case, why would you have them as bishops in a church? Homosexual. See? And God punished homosexuality by his heart, if not harder than he did anything else. Because right. he burned up everybody, burned up the city, and to this day ain't nothing growing inside of Mega More. At all. See? So all of this stuff, but see, you got a lot of folk call themselves say they want to be social justice warriors. <laughs> they wanna they wanna put their they wanna stick their toe over there in that circle of people, in that circle of friends, and still want to be saved. You can't be saved doing that because you're agreeing with the world. And God says if you make yourself a friend of the world, you become the enemy of God, according to James. See? And the Bible says in 1 John, it says, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. How is any of that going to fit into God's kingdom? See? And if the Bible says that we represent the kingdom and we are the church of God individually, how can you fit that in to your relationship with God when God says you are the church? Right. See, it don't fit. It doesn't fit. It's like me wearing a size 12 trying to get into a size 6. <laughs> that ain't going to fit. I don't care. I can wait until be trying to get it to fit till Jesus come back. It ain't going to fit. Because these bad boys right here, they grew to a 12, not a 6. See? But yet people want to try to fit God into any little pocket of their little personal life and their little personal likings and stuff and their personal dislike. They want to fit him in there. God ain't going to fit into the world. Right. Jesus was not sent to fit into the world. He was sent to rebuke the world. To ridicule the world, to revile the world is what he was sent to do. Right. And to save the world above everything else. Right. See? Right. So you can't fit him in. No matter how hard you try. You can't fit him in. So in verse um, uh, but to just put this on your mind, on your in your memory one more time. He says, Whoever says I know him but does not Keep his commandments. He said nothing about confessing. He said keeping them, living them, doing them, sharing them. See? Because commandments do tell us, does tell us to share the gospel. The commandments do tell us to let our light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. But Jesus said you got a problem when your darkness is your light. Mm. Right. See? You out there serving the devil and running around the church talking about hallelujah, how much you love Jesus. And your father is the devil. See? The thing about it, I'm so thankful that God sees and knows everything. Right. right. Stuff that I don't hide from him on purpose that I may do that stupid and don't think that I want conviction from God. I don't want to be comfortable in my sin. Right. See? And that's the problem with a lot of people. They're so doggone comfortable in their sin, the doggone cushion about that high that they're sitting on. Comfortable. Because even a doggone, I mean, even a doggone dynamite blast ain't going to get them off of that. They're settled in. And anytime people get settled into the world, you can forget about it. You can't even pry them out the world. Right, right. Damn. Self-justification is going to send a lot of people to hell because they think they're right. right. Hey, everybody else is wrong. Forget about everybody else. They think God is wrong. Right. God don't know what he's talking about. I'm living a good life. Mm. I know what's best for me. Mm -hmm. You know, and like I shared this with you all, you know, and, and, and me and Bruno talk about this some. You know, you got some folks who are educators, these professors and all this stuff, and a lot of them think they're smarter than everybody else. And they don't care whether the truth that you know and believe is the absolute truth. You got proof and their theories and all that is exactly that, a daggone theory. But in their mind, it's the truth 
And you better receive it as a truth. Why? Because I'm the one in charge. Mm -hmm. That's the way that crap works. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of gutless people, gutless teachers, gutless uh, other folk in, in academia, whatever, that will not stand up for the truth. They will, they'll sit there, they'll believe that crap and won't do nothing. Knowing that what they're being told is not true, and really the bottom line is, or the root of it is, they're calling God a liar. And you sitting there okay with that. Well, if I tell the truth, then you know well they, they, they may take away my, my they may take away my my position and all that or whatever. So if you've been trusting God, think you got that position because God put you over there. That's right. That's right. And he didn't put you over there to compromise. Right, right. He put you over there to be a witness and a testimony. Amen. Amen. See, what did Jesus say? He said, look, if you are a light, he said, you should be on top of the hill shining for everybody to see the light. And what they see when they see that light, they're going to see Jesus being lived in you and through you. That's what they're going to see. Because they ain't got no business looking at you telling you all this and all that. And if you're running around talking about, talking about wait a minute, hold up. You, you, you didn't pat me on this side back here. Pat me on this side back there. You ain't looking for back slaps. Right. All you're looking for is for God to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yeah. Amen. Well done. You've obeyed my word. You've obeyed my commandment. And as a result, you don't know about it, but that person that you were witnessing to by simply living your life before them, they came to me and they accepted my son. See? Those are the kind of testimonies you want your life to be, man. That you made the difference in somebody else's life. All because of who lives in you. <clears throat> but how many people do that? See? And I'm telling you especially, this is just what I know because this, ain't, this, this, ain't, this hasn't changed. Because some of the most Arrogant people that I ever met were in education. Oh, yeah. And I worked in education for about four years. They, they were some of the hardest people, most arrogant people, you know, and people, and I worked in what we call the maintenance department. I was over the school bus system and uh, for the routing and all of that stuff. And they looked down on us. We may as well have been up underneath my, my shoe as far as they were concerned. <laughs> Because they didn't think that you were intelligent enough to talk to them, even though I got my degree. Mm -hmm. See? And even before I got my degree, I wasn't stupid. Right. right. See? Common sense will take you a long way. Mm -hmm. Right. See? Because sometimes people, some people, start thinking more highly of themselves than they ought to. Right. See? And that's the problem in the business world as well. You got these guys with these highfalutin titles or whatever, and they look down on you like, you do what I tell you to do. I remember one time this guy was my boss, and then, um, so he came into the office. He go, can't come with me. So he go, come. So I said, so what is it? Just come with me. So he just walking. I mean, walking fast, man. And so I'm behind him, right? And he walking in front of me. I turned around and went back to my office. I said, I ain't nobody doggone slave. I said, uh-uh. And I sent him a an email. I said, look, man. I said, I'm not your slave, and I'm not going to be falling around, falling around uh, behind you like I'm on or whatever. I said, you are not. You don't own me. See? I said, so I'm up here in my office or whatever. So about 10 minutes later, come, well, you said I'm racist or whatever. I said, you said that. You cannot walk around being afraid to live the life that God commanded you to live as his child and as his witness and as his testimony. Your first obligation as a child of God is to do what? Be a witness. What did Jesus say in Mark 16? Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he's not talking about being a pastor or being a, 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 a preacher or none of that stuff. Your life in Jesus Christ automatically has prepared you to be the person that God has called you to be. A witness and a testimony, a light in a dark place. See, he's called you to be that, but if you're sitting around going, uh-uh, uh-uh, he's my boss and he may 
He may fire me, whatever. Look, I've lost two jobs for that. Fire for not denying Jesus. I know people who got their head chopped off because they would not deny or denounce Jesus. I promise you, man, if you put that to the test, put a lot of these people to the test, you know, okay, tell them, look, if you you if you don't deny Jesus, we're going to cut your head off. That wouldn't be a whole lot of heads rolling. Because people would be not denying Jesus left and right. Because right. Right. they do that right now without any pressure. Right. Right. See? Mm, right. No pressure, but you still deny it. Mm -hmm. And you know what Jesus said about people like that? You deny me, I'm denying you. Yeah. See? So in other words, he ain't your Lord, he's not your Savior. You don't go, don't go uh, uh, praying to him to help you or whatever. Because Jesus said, uh, God said rather than Jeremiah, he said, look, he said, you've been worshiping those gods and you've been offering up sacrifices to those gods and you've been believing in those gods. He said, when you got, a, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, when you got a problem, he said, don't come calling on me. He said, go see them. He said, because I'm not hearing what you got to say. See, we don't believe that God will do that to us, but he will because he has, and he's the same today, yesterday, and forever, and he ain't going to treat nobody different 2,000 years ago than he treats us right now. Right. See, right. no different. Right. We like to, I hear people go, oh, man, you know, Pastor, this is the 21st century. So, what does that mean? Nothing. God's still the same. Right. Your, the commandments that God put on everybody then from the very outset, they are still the same today. Right. You can listen to your little prosperity preachers and all of this stuff and let them make you think that if you get a bunch of money, then you're going to be pleasing to God and your life going to be what it ought to be. Come on, man. That's a lie straight from the pit of hell. Right. There's no way in the Bible God tells us to preach on money, right. how to right. get money, how to manipulate people to steal money. Right. God never told us to do that. Right. I swear, when when Kenneth, when Kenneth Copeland and uh, Creflo Dollar and uh, I'm trying to think of Jerry, uh, it was about three or four other ones. Now, when they first started out preaching, they were preaching. One thing Kenneth Copeland used to preach was faith. He was good at that, preaching faith, how to have faith in God and that. But as soon as he started preaching prosperity, everything else got dumped in the doggone cesspool. Because they saw where they could manipulate people into giving them money. And now I can get me a $63 million jet. What doggone preacher need a $63 million <laughs> jet when you know there's a whole bunch of people in that church that have needs and it ain't going to even cost no $63 million right. because right. the fact that, you know, their needs are a whole lot less than what you stole them from. Mm. See? But yet you need all of that because you got to get somewhere quick. Or whatever. Manipulating people. Deceiving people. These dudes are going to pay for that man. And they're going to pay for it before they die. That's right. right. And it's going, they're going to reap it a hundredfold. Because like I said earlier. God loves his people. Those who love him. Those who are obedient to him. God loves those people. And he is not going to stand around. And allow his children to be abused. By these clowns and stuff, and not punish them, see, and he said, look, no, nah, you don't have to get even, he said, don't be, be praying, you know, they're not going to burn them up like crispy critters, he says, I've already told you what I'm going to do, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord, so you keep loving your enemies, you keep praying for your enemies, if your enemy asks you for something, give it to them, see, he said, give it to them, and he calls a foul in their head while you're doing that, See, mm -hmm. so the thing is, is that you need to know the truth. And if you don't know the truth, you have already set yourself up for eternal failure. First Peter 1, 14 through 16 says, As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. Mm. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And the thing about it is, being holy before God, did Jesus ever run around here saying stuff that wasn't pleasing to God? Did Jesus ever walk around here, you know, 
acting like anybody in the world? No. Jesus was completely and totally committed to God and to the will and to the purposes of God. He was committed to that. And so you didn't hear crap coming out of his mouth that wasn't pleasing to God. See? Because the one thing that you need to ask yourself, and I've said this before in the church, is that, and you really shouldn't have to ask Jesus because if you're walking right, the Holy Ghost is going to convict your stuff right. that you say and that you do and where you go. You'll be convicted about that. But he said, and the Bible even says, let no uh, unholy thing proceed forth out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Nothing unholy. So that means that we have to guard our mouths, we have to guard our ears, we have to guard our eyes. Because all of those things that I just mentioned can have an effect on us if we listen to the wrong things, if we look on the wrong things, if we say the wrong things, because when you say something out your mouth, the Bible says that that word has power. Right. And you're going to be held accountable for everything that you said, you know, out of our mouths, good and bad. See? So every idle word that men shall speak, the Bible says that we will give account of in the day of judgment. That's what's going to happen. So God deals with the whole person being transformed into his likeness, into righteousness and stuff. So, so in uh, so in verse uh, Matthew six thirty three, Jesus said, "But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you." Keep His commandments. Be holy. Be a follower of Jesus. Pursue righteousness or the righteous life. Seek first means everything comes after him. Everything else comes after Jesus in our lives. Everything. Um, when, when, when we commit ourselves to Jesus, we're committing to putting him first and above all else. Men, people, things, stuff. He's got to be first. In, um, in John 8, 12, it says this, and I'm just reading this pretty quick. And then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John 8, 28. Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. Total surrender to the will of God. Total surrender to the will of God. He said, but as my father hath taught me, I speak these things, and he that sent me is with me. The father hath not left me alone, for I do always, always those things that please him. Always, is what Jesus said. Now, on the other hand, that's what a person does who is serving the Lord. That's what they do, those scriptures. that they, they live, they pattern their lives after Jesus. They follow after his example. They become one with him so that we do exactly what Jesus says and we know what he says because we have fellowship with him. And the example was Jesus and his relationship with God. I always do those things that please him and that's the way that we are to be as well. Um, I think I'm going to just stop there and we will take it up um, I think next week but there's one something that I did want to share with you before we say good night <laughs> to the message today okay here we are okay here are a few things that are deceptive and that are false doctrines that people tell people that they're going to be able, you know, to please God and to get to heaven. Um, in verse, uh, in Matthew 24, 24, it says, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and, show, and, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Purpose there, false Christ. People are going to be saying they have gotten or not. Okay. Um, 
verse uh, 11, in, uh, chapter 11, verse 13 of 2 Corinthians. For such a false apostle, deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And in 2 Corinthians, I mean 2 Peter 2, 1, it talks about false preachers and false teachers as well. Now, number one, morally good people will not inherit the kingdom of God. And you can find that the answer to that, to that in Matthew 19, 17. Church attendance will not save you because it does not change your heart. Only when we hear the word and believe it, that's what changes our heart. Not what you say pleases God uh, is going to get you into heaven. If you profess to knowing God and are not living your life daily to please him, you're not in love with him. Driven more to obtain, you are driven more to obtain worldly success because that's what they tell you to do in, in, in a lot of these churches. Worldly success, you make it more important than holiness and righteousness. And that's what, you know, somewhat referring to with the, um, with that prosperity stuff. Because um, I grew up in that stuff, man. And, and I mean, really, it makes you forget about the stuff that's really important because you're trying to pursue things and stuff. And if you're trying to pursue things and stuff, what are you doing? You're walking in the flesh. Yes. And the spirit can't help you because your mind is not stayed upon Jesus and on the things of God. It's on the things of the flesh. Okay. Um, being baptized in water will not save you. Ain't that right, Keith? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and outwardly appearing righteous to men, you know, is not going to save you. Right, right. All your manifest is that you, you're a hypocrite and you're practicing lawlessness. If you think any sin is okay, you are not committed to God. You're not saved because your preachers say so. And a lot of people put so much faith in them guys that if the preachers say they're saved, they don't care what anybody says. They are saying, you know, I'm saved because my preacher said I'm saved. See, so last little thing, we'll pray and conclude. If you do not expect to receive anything from God, your fake lies of faith to him won't persuade him to bless you at all. God is a God of truth. God is a God of righteousness. God is a God of holiness. So next week I finish this up. Because I do want to finish it because we talked a lot about uh, hypocrisy and hypocrites and we talked some, you know, about the righteous as well. Um, but next week I want to delve into, uh, you know, the unrighteousness, the unrighteous and what happens to, to hypocrites and stuff. You know, if you're a hypocrite, you cannot be on solid footing with God because that means if you're a hypocrite, you're trying to fit two things into your relationship with God when only one is accepted, right. you know. So so we'll conclude and we'll, uh, we'll finish this up next week, um, you know, and see what God has to say about it. So God bless you all. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord.